Hello and welcome to the Art of Artisan. Today we are turbo reanimating. We are going to be consistently reanimating on turn four. This deck is sweet. Thanks to a couple new cards from the Lord of the Rings set. Rise of the Witch King says each player sacrifices a creature, and if you sacrifice a creature this way, you may return another permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is cool in that it doesn't just reanimate creatures, but I'm not sure of the right shell. I was thinking of doing like some crazy three-color God Pharaoh statue reanimator with this, but what we're going to be doing with it is use it as a removal spell that also reanimates. It's pretty much in our deck a better Blood for Bones. Blood for Bones, you sacrifice a creature, and then you get a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield and a creature from your graveyard to your hand. I think that forcing our opponent to sacrifice something is more valuable, but regardless, this means we have eight different spells that cost four mana to reanimate a creature. This is really a fast deck. And we also have two copies of Diagraph Rebirth, because I felt like ten reanimation spells was about the right spot. This one's nice in that you, we can mill it over and cast it, and it can potentially let us reanimate on turn three if things go perfectly. Um, but we do need a lot of mill. We need to get our targets into the graveyard. So we're running the classic Stitcher Supplier, four of. We've also got a lot, by which I mean 10 different cards, that end up milling and bringing cards into, uh, land cards into our hand. This is part of the reason this deck is so consistent. We have these creatures that mill and put lands into our hand. But what's a new card we have from Lord of the Rings? This card is seen play in Modern, is Troll of Kaza Doom. This is a reanimation target that puts itself into the graveyard and makes sure we have the lands to play our reanimation spell. It's absolutely incredible. This card is honestly one of the coolest new things this deck has going for it. Um, if we do end up with it stuck in our hand, instead of milling it over, we can get rid of it, which is not something you can normally do. We do have three copies of Bone Shards to try and get reanimation targets out of our hand, but this card just makes the deck so much more consistent. And then on top of that, we've got Archfiend of Sorrows. This is a card that can reanimate itself for free, so it's, it's sort of the opposite side of the coin from the Troll of Kaza Doom. It's not the most powerful creature, and it's expensive to reanimate it, and it only comes back for one turn, but this is a decent piece of interaction in our deck. But speaking of interaction, is our best reanimation target, Dusk Mangler. Dusk Mangler, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature, discards a card, and loses four life. This is an edict effect. It starts eating at our opponent's hand, and the additional cost to cast the spell, we don't need to pay because we're just reanimating it. So we don't need to sacrifice a creature, discard a card, or pay for life. And then there's a one of in the deck, Bookworm. And the reason I'm running this as a one of is it's probably one of the best cards we have against control, as it does draw a card, we can loop it, it helps us prevent ourselves from milling out. So in the matchups where we need it, it's going to be a long game, and we'll find our one of Bookworm. In the games where we don't need Bookworm, we'll hopefully not draw it because it's only a one of in the deck. Um, so we've got a lot of fodder for the Blood for Bones and Rise of the Witch King over here in all of these creatures. We also have our mana base, two Colony Gardens. Colony Gardens enters tapped, but gives us a plant creature token. If you look at our curve, we do not have the greatest curve, so playing tap lands is a little bit free in our deck. So the Colony Gardens are a good choice here. Haunted Mire is a one-of because Troll of Kaza Doom can tutor this up. So if we only have black mana and Troll of Kaza Doom, then it can fix our mana. Actually, regardless of what mana we have in our opening hand, Troll of Kaza Doom can get us both colors, which is really awesome. One copy of Witherbloom Campus because it's awkward in multiples, and the rest of our dual lands are Riveteer's Overlooks. These are especially useful because Eccentric Farmer mills three cards, then returns any land card from our graveyard to our hand. So this having these helps guarantee that Eccentric Farmer, even if it doesn't mill any lands, will have something to bring back to our hand. The whole deck is cohesive. It's very straightforward. We've only got five pieces of interaction, 
and they're also kind of just good in our deck. We're, we're just trying to turbo reanimate. Turn four, we want to have big fatty on the battlefield. We want our opponent to be completely scared. Um, I love Troll of Cause of Doom. The, it's practically unblockable in most matchups. So this is a quick clock. And also, we ramp a bunch. So a six mana creature isn't that hard. I mean, we don't ramp, but we, we're going to get six land drops pretty quickly. So let's get to the games and see if this plan of turbo reanimating actually will work. Let's go. Game number one. We are playing against Lecter Hansen. I am in gold, so this isn't... But I'm, I'm at high gold. I'm close to the pretty much average platinum tier where you'd expect budget decks to be best tested. Okay, so we've got no way to get Duskbane learned to the graveyard. There's only three cards in our deck that do that. But we've got Rise of the Witch King and lots of mill. This should be good. Um, we should be able to just go Seder Wayfinder, or find a basic land into Eccentric Farmer, find another basic land, hopefully, so we can Rise of the Witch King on turn four. Oh! Does that change our plan? Kind of does. Oh no, we can't play that this turn. Never mind. We can't play that this turn because there is no target. I just, <laughs> I wish this said destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker. So we could just cast it targeting nothing. Also, our opponent is a combo deck. I did not pay attention to that. They're playing a bunch of looting effects. This is probably a Mizzix Mastery deck or it has late for dinner. They're probably reanimating Scholar of the Ages, slash using Mizzix Mastery, trying to get Emergent Ultimatum and win. So we need to be fast. All right, let's see if we can do something fast then. See, so Rayfinder finds us a basic land, good. Now, if Eccentric Farmer mills over a basic land, or we naturally draw one, we can just go Eccentric Farmer into Rise of the Witch King. Hopefully, we'll have a good reanimation target at that point, though. Oh, wait, we have a Dusk Mangler in the graveyard. We're good. That's probably our best target in this matchup. Although, it's just, this is not a good matchup. We're trying to do the slightly broken thing, so we're not running a ton of interaction. Our opponent is doing the uber broken thing, and our lack of interaction means we are going to lose in that. That's the risk we get. Oh, our opponent missed a land drop, though. I think our opponent is currently tanking. I think they may have disconnected because they missed a land drop. That is a price you pay with combo decks. When you're playing a combo deck, it is, you do choose to not mulligan some hands. You're much, it's much harder to say no to a hand with combo pieces, but not enough lands. Never mind. They had lands. They discarded two lands. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> so I have no idea why they were tanking there. All right. Um, I think we just dropped the eccentric farmer. Hope we hit a basic land. There we go. There's the swamp. Next turn, we are going to force our opponent to discard, which is actually kind of significant. Despite these spells being draw, draw spells, they actually are card negative. They're negative on card advantage. That's card neutral. Also, haste scares me. Atraxa. Okay, so they're Atraxa reanimator to some degree. Maybe got something else going on here. It's a little bit suspicious to me what they're doing. Now we have a decision. Do we Rise of the Witch King, or do we save it to force our opponent to sacrifice an Atraxa? They may be an all-in Atraxa thing, and if we just force them to sacrifice Atraxa over and over, eh, we've got a Bone Shards. We will let our bone shards be good enough. I think I think we just rely on bone shards and speed. So your Rayfinder gets sacrificed. 
However, do we just play Troll of Kaza Doom? And save Dusk Mangler for future re No, we've got a Dusk Mangler in hand. We've got a Dusk Mangler in hand. Eventually, we'll hopefully be able to cast that. These trolls are also probably going to be castable fairly soon. In fact, we have... If we discard one troll and play a tap land next turn, then the turn after that we can just hard cast one. We can bone shards discarding Archfiend of Sorrows. And then reanimate it eventually. Which is four hasty damage, which after we swing in one more time is exactly lethal. Ooh, that's good, yeah. Alright. We've got the line to win here. Opponent reveals... What do they reveal? Oracle of the Alpha. That's scary. Bristlebrand. Go for the throat. Go for the throat. That's annoying. Go for the throat is very annoying. But they can't do anything quite yet. Okay, they sacrifice to give... Oh, they give haste. Dang it. That's rough. Yeah, Troxa getting in there is... Oh, never mind. That is no longer bad. Okay. Oh, I would love to bring back a Dusk Mangler. Okay, I have a way to reanimate Dusk Manglers now. Um... I think I Bone Shards kill the Atroxa. Discarding a Dusk Mangler... Then I cycle one troll. Okay, yeah. We're going to discard a card. We're going to discard Archfiend or Dusk Mangler. Dusk Mangler is just so brutal against our opponent's game plan, it feels like. I feel like we need to... We're going to be able to hard cast it soon enough. If this game goes long enough that we need like so many removal spells, then... We'll probably just hard cast the one in our hand. And our opponent down to 11. Play a tap land and pass the turn. End step, we are going to cycle a troll. And then be able to hard cast a troll next turn. If our opponent kills our Dusk Mangler, reanimating it seems really nice. We might. We also have seven mana if we cycle both trolls, but we'll probably draw land in time anyways. You know, for being a like turbo combo deck, I feel like our decisions and like the way we're interacting with our opponent feels a lot more like a lot less like we're playing solitaire than the average turbo combo deck. So we cycle the troll. Grab a basic, basic swamp, if my computer will ever load it. Now we've got six mana, which is enough to hard cast a troll. We can also, okay, that's also enough to hard cast Dusk Mangler next turn. We could also haste in Archfiend of Sorrows and, well, no, they have go for the throat. They have go for the throat, okay. Um, I think we start off... Oh, mana efficiency versus doing the best things while my opponent has less cards in hand. Lots of decisions to be made here. I think we just swing in. I was thinking about unearthing Archfiend of Sorrows just for a little bit of speed. But I think the right play is to just swing in here. Let our opponent probably kill our Dusk Mangler. Or just chump block it? Sure. Ephemerate. Okay, so they're doing Ephemerate Oracle in their Atraxa deck. Sure. That seems a little bit of a stretch to pull off, but if it works for our opponent, it works. So now we cast Troll... Our opponent can go for the throat one of our creatures. We've got effective burn via Dusk Mangler. We've got haste through Archfiend of Sorrows. Like, we've got 
a lot of reach here. Our opponent needs to gain life. They need to, like, bitter reunion into reanimate Atraxa and to give Atraxa haste. Ephemerate again? Oh, that doesn't work quite how our opponent might like. Because these rebound triggers will happen... Oh, wait, no, this, this will work. Yeah, because they can... Because it creates the copy as the rebound trigger. It's not like both rebound triggers were targeting the oracle. Because they choose the target after it, after the trigger resolves. Okay. So they've oracle of the alpha a lot. Which I'm actually kind of grateful for. That means our opponent's probably drawing a lot of mox amber and stuff. Which are not going to be good. But they hit the atroxa. Okay. That's frustrating. Okay, we need to... Oh, we have lethal still, kind of. No, oh my gosh, Mox Sapphire. Okay, the Moxon did help them. Because now they can Bitter Reunion, give haste. Bitter Reunion, give your stuff haste is probably the right play here. Hmm. Bitter Reunion, yep. Oh, wait, they, they had enough mana even without the Mox Sapphire. Okay. Black Lotus, sure. You gonna reanimate Gristlebrand? They can reanimate Gristlebrand and give haste, and we're dead in the air. That's game. All right. That's cool. Uh, we were one turn short. I think, I think we had them very soon. Like, if they gave their creatures haste, like, even if they... Let's say they didn't have the Black Lotus off the top. They probably would have just swung in for nine in the air, maybe just with the Troxa. We could swing in with Troll of Cause Doom. Our opponent couldn't block that. They'd go for the throat it. Um, I guess we could swing in with everything. Hope that they block with the Oracle of the Alpha. Rise of the Witch King to kill a Troxa. I don't know. It would have been tough. Uh, but our opponent's deck was full of dead cards after blinking their Oracle of the Alpha. They just happened to ha have the late for dinner. So I guess Atroxa and Oracle of the Alpha does have a cool synergy. Where Oracle of the Alpha fills your deck with a bunch of really bad cards, unless you have a lot of cards in hand. And Atroxa gives you a lot of cards in hand. Alright, on to game number two. Game number two. Hopefully we're not playing against someone who's trying to play solitaire against us. Hopefully we're playing against something fair. Mulligan. Um, okay. Bone shards stick stuff in the graveyard. Yeah, we've got all the mana we need. Oh, wait, we don't. We're going first. Um, I want to discard the Archfiend. Probably. Do I risk it? I'm going to risk it. We have so many draws in our deck that give us more creatures and such. Like, I give us more land so we could draw, like... And we've got Eccentric Farmer in hand, but we've got a lot of cheaper cards that would do something similar. But now our opponent gets rid of our Blood for Bones, and the plan falls apart a little. Or they might get rid of Eccentric Farmer, hoping to mana screw us. Or Bone Shards? I could see them maybe getting rid of Bone Shards. If they've got their own... Like, if they've got, like, a Shield Grid, they might be like, eh, I don't care if you get your Archfiend of Sorrows down. I'm just gonna win with Shield Grid. I, I can actually see a reason for taking everything in my hand besides Archfiend. Archfiend is probably the only one that... Okay, so they're, they're hoping to Mana Screw us. Yeah, I'm going to play this now in case I draw an Eccentric Farmer. I was thinking about hiding information by playing the Forest to maybe bait our opponent into Thought Seizing again. But in case I draw an Eccentric Farmer, I want to get the tap land out of the way. That is the exact situation where I would have... I mean, our opponent still did Thought Seize, so I guess there was no reason to hold our Haunted Mire in hand. And I guess our opponent did remove any way we have of using Blood for Bones. Come to think of it, we can't actually cast it because we have nothing to sacrifice. 
However, it doesn't matter because we don't have any mana to do it. Okay, one ring. Opponent's going to start going off. But we have direct damage and haste. So them losing life is always... It's actually kind of a risk against us. We have so many sacrificable creatures. We've got all our stitches suppliers. We've got nine more. Let's see, we've got 13. Yeah, we've got 13 hits in the deck. 13 different cards that we would be very happy to draw right now. Or even just, I guess a land could be okay to eventually start getting towards things. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, I guess we'll Bone Shard Shieldred. Get our Dusk Mangler into the graveyard. Goodbye, Shelly. And we're in trouble. We are in trouble. Any sort of creature we play probably gets removed. Opponent might just start beating down with Den of the Bugbear. And no, not with the One Ring. With the One Ring, do you even need these cards? <laughs> With the one ring, you always have stuff to spend your mana on. It almost feels like using these lands is a mistake. <laughs> Which is ridiculous, because they're really good lands in a two-color deck. The one ring. Right, Rise of the Witch King getting worse as our opponent plays more creatures. Um, Archfiend of Sorrows does kill their Blood Tithe Harvester. And then Rise of the Witch King could kill something else. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, This is rough. A land right now I'd be okay with, because then I can Archfiend away the Blood Tithe Harvester. Well, let's see, how many, how many hits do I have in the deck? How many things do I not want to draw? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Actually, no, I want that draw. One, two, three, four, five. There are five, six, seven, eight. There are eight draws in the deck that I do not want. That's it. So I've got a five sixths chance of drawing anything okay. Something decent. Like even lands right now are okay because they let me wipe the board a little bit. Crucius is just going to give our opponent too much, though. Okay, Circle of the Land Druid. Probably too late. We probably just die here. Ugh. That was just rough. These are the kind of draws I was hoping to hit earlier. <laughs> I will take action to mill four. Why did... Oh my gosh, they killed it before I had any lands in my graveyard. We had zero lands in Graveyard. Wow. Opponent actually stopped us from getting a land there. We're dead. Man, this is so much worse than when I was testing the deck. I don't know how we're having such... I mean, our opponent double thought seized, but I felt really good. We have so many good draws, and we just were not hitting them. We hit Bookworm into... Another reanimation spell into Dusk Mangler. Ugh. Oh, on to game three. Game number three. This has been rough. Also, I forgot to update the record. Got it now. Versus Twisted Tea Girl. I actually, with this deck, wanted to make it more consistent. It was already pretty good, but I'm like, there's no way that it should be this good. I had Arboreal Grazer because I had so many cards that were tutoring lands into my hand. So I actually had Arboreal Grazer in an earlier version of this. And I ended up cutting it to run more creatures. <laughs> and now I've been doing worse. I've been having a harder time after adjusting my deck more. Actually, not going to tell my opponent what we're doing. Let my opponent make a move before I cycle. We do have mana to eventually cast Eccentric Farmer. Like, like Assuming Eccentric Farmer hits something... We actually have enough mana to Blood for Bones in hand right now, which is kind of crazy. We're not skimping on lands in this deck, so we should be able to draw one naturally and not have to cycle the other troll. Although, there's not too much downside to cycling the other troll. 
All right. If I want to play Eccentric Farmer for sure next turn, I need to cycle a troll. So we're going to play it safe. Um, one funny thing with Diagraph Rebirth is it actually works really well with these Blood for Bones sort of things. Or even the Rise of the Lich King. Because like, if you Rise of the Lich King, get back a Dusk Mangler, that's three creatures dying this turn. So with six mana, which isn't too hard, you can double reanimate, which is awesome. We'll Swamp Cycle. <sighs> we are seeing how good Troll is, though. Troll is making what would otherwise be an awful hand much more playable. Where I'm feeling like, yeah, we could actually do something here. Eccentric Farmer being a 2-3, I think this card is underrated. Like, a 2-3 creature is actually pretty just decent in a lot of situations. Eccentric Farmer. Opponent, what you gonna do? I mean, Orcish Bowmasters isn't gonna kill Eccentric Farmer very quickly. We are not drawing any extra cards in our deck, so Orcish Bowmasters is kind of meh. There's the land we need. What we need now, though, is a creature. A creature is what we need for this Blood for Bones. <laughs> I still don't get how we're running low on creatures. We've got a fair number in the deck. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so opponent's playing Mono Black Tempt. Um, doing lots of Call of the Ring, draw, Nazgul's, Orcish Bowmasters, because it's in the same set, why not? It's broken in a black deck. Um, that's a Seder Wayfinder. So we can... I'm going to start off with the Seder Wayfinder, which is notably a blocker for Orcish Bowmasters. Okay, have we played a land this turn? I think we have... So I'm going to go for untapped lands. That mills a Dusk Mangler into the graveyard. Sick. Yes, we already did play a land this turn. I did that correctly. Play the Stitcher Supplier. Mills three cards. Didn't really matter what I milled there. I've already got a well-stocked graveyard. Um, and now our opponent should have a hard time getting through with their Orcish Bowmasters. Okay, they're actually putting on the Nazgul. They're not planning to swing with the Bowmasters. That means, most likely, the Nazgul does grow every turn. We would love for them to swing in, because we've got a bunch of Edict effects. I guess we can eventually get them with, like, Archfiend of Sorrows. That's not very strong. Like, that's... I, I mean, Archfiend of Sorrows eventually is going to be really good here, but we just don't have a way to get into our graveyard. Unless we mill one over right now. Darn. Didn't mill one over. There's another Nazgul. Oh, that's going to make a really big Nazgul. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Our opponent gets stuff. Now there's the question, do we lock with Seder Wayfinder anything? Probably the Nazgul would hit us for 8 damage because the ring's fully done. Which means we're just going to Diagraph Rebirth on our turn. Resolve. Sure, sure. Oh, man. Call of the Ring Nazgul stuff looking really good. If I don't block with Seder Wayfinder, I can Blood for Bones, get back Dusk Mangler, and accomplish pretty much nothing with that. Yeah, Dusk Mangler is not actually even that good yet. Do I even have a Dusk Mangler? Wait a second. I thought I had one in the graveyard. I do not. I've only... Oh, yeah, I've got one. One Dusk Mangler. So, yeah, I think I block here, and I'm just going to Diagraph Rebirth. Oh, man. Our opponent's Nazgul plan is just going to grow out of control way too fast. We can force our opponent to sack a Bowmaster... And discard a card and lose four life, but that's not actually that much that we're doing. Okay, Diagraph Rebirth. Bring back a Dusk Mangler. 
Thus Mangler ruins our opponent's hand slightly. It, it just doesn't actually do much here. I mean, theoretically, we have everything we need to <laughs> burn our opponent out of the game with three Dusk Manglers. <laughs> We've actually got like a lot of damage in burn right now. Oh my goodness. If we could somehow force ourselves to discard the Archfiend of Sorrows, then we could just Archfiend of Sorrows in, and then Dusk Mangler would do a ton of work. Okay. Opponent, you're going to swing in, force me to chump. So right now, if opponent hits me with Nazgul, oh yeah, I'm dead. That's lethal. <sighs> Man. Hmm. This has been a little rough. I do not know what has been different. Like, I guess the difference is I slowed down the game plan by taking out the Arboreal Grazers. Let's get to game four and see if we can turn this around. Game number four. Feeling a little bit down after losing so much in a row. Versus Peyotin. And we do not Mmm, Seder Wayfinder. Even if it finds us a forest, lets us play Eccentric Farmer. We don't have any reanimation in the hand. We kind of need our reanimation spells. We mulligan that. Okay. Now we need green mana. We have Bone Shards to put Dusk Mangler into the graveyard. I guess technically we don't need green mana. Although we probably will to get a creature. Yeah, so a forest here. Drawing a forest really sets us up well. Hopefully our opponent's playing something that's worth killing on turn one. Sure, I accept that target. Okay, turn two, I can play Witherbloom. Yeah, okay. We have everything we need for a turn four reanimation. Assuming Eccentric Farmer hits us a basic land. Or that we draw one in the next two turns. So, fairly decent chance here. Speaker of the Heavens, sure, sure. Legion's Landing. Opponent's going to be gaining a lot of life here. Which is a little bit sketchy for us. Call me Garden. Might as well play that. Get the creature. Much more worthwhile to sack the Blood for Bones. Actually, is it? That's a weird thought. I might actually want to sack Eccentric Farmer to Blood for Bones. Simply because if I sacrifice this to the Blood for Bones, I get nothing back to my hand. Is it better to have Eccentric Farmer that I can replay? Or a plant? I honestly do not know. Okay, Seder Wayfinder lets me guaranteed do Blood for Bones, assuming our opponent doesn't kill any creatures, but I don't think they will. I'm happy to trade this with either of their... Oh, shoot. That's right. <sighs> opponent is doing stuff. And Seder Wayfinder is something I'm more willing to sack to Blood for Bones and get back to hand. I guess we grab the Swamp. I don't know that it really matters much which land we grab there. Oh man, this is the authority of the consoles. I'm not a huge fan of that card. It's very much reliant on your opponent. But like, I guess if you're planning to snowball really quickly, it does help. And our opponent is certainly in the snowball sort of game plan right now. Rise of the Witch King. That is simply better. Yeah. Yeah. This is better right now because we force our opponent to lose both of their creatures. They lose one. And then they lose the other one to Dusk Mangler. And a card from their hand. And now we can put the, a little dent in their life total. Which should make it harder for them to turn on things like their Speaker of the Heavens. Lotus Field is weird here. I wonder, is Knight of the White Orchid a card that isn't historic? I do not know. Um, we're just going to play out a creature here. We're going to 
save our reanimation for a better target, I think. Oh, that's a better target. Another Dusk Mangler. Sick. We'll thin the deck with Riveteers. Oh, Overlook. Uh, is Bookworm or Dusk Mangler better? Probably Dusk Mangler. Depending on what our opponent does. Like, if they don't play a creature, they're just... I mean, if they play a creature, it just dies to Dusk Mangler next turn, and that's going to be a huge swing in our favor. If they don't play anything, then they just lose the card in hand. Oh, uh, yeah. This is the kind of matchup that we're hoping to run into. All right, let's see what the card in your hand is, opponent. First, we swing in. <laughs> Watch it be settled the wreckage. Watch me get settled the wreckage right here. Oh, my gosh. Okay, no, it's Igonjo. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And now we have enough mana at this point that I think we blood for bones to sacrificing Seder Wayfinder. We put a Dusk Mangler onto the battlefield and we put a Dusk Mangler into hand. Okay, so I should have done Dusk Mingler pre-combat to keep the other one alive, but didn't get too hard punished for it. This gains our opponent a little bit of life, but gets us a little bit deeper. Mills over a Diagraph Rebirth significantly. That is another Dusk Mangler in the future, potentially. And now opponent, I can't think of anything that would really help. Yeah, Book of Exalted Deeds, sure. And they are dead. Swing in. They go down to three. Then I cast Dusk Mangler, um, discarding a card. Goodbye, Riveteer's Overlook. And opponent gains one life and then loses four. There we go. Opponent's deck wasn't too impressive there, but it still feels good to win. So, like, I think our opponent just saw a good opening in their hand. They saw, I've got all these one drops to start slamming down, but they really did not have a good game plan if they got disrupted. They they just curved out a little too hard with one drops. But, I mean, we'll take the win when we can get it. On to game number five. Alrighty, game number five versus Napalm Neal. Let's see if we can get a 2-3. I feel like this deck is right around a 2-3, so I'd like to see it get that rating. No way to get Dusk Manglers out of our hand. Blood for Bones, though. We're on the draw. Nah. There's just too many cards that already make that hand effectively a mulligan. This is much better. Got a little bit of interaction. We've got ways to find our lands and use the Blood for Bones. It's also our mill. And let's see what opponent's up to. Hopefully they're not doing something more unfair than us. Alright, Gate to Sea Tower. Either they're playing Gates or they're playing Control. That's my guess based on that card. Blue Green. Okay, this is weird. I actually have no idea what the opponent's doing. It could just be a straight up... Okay, there's a guild gate. That's interesting. Alright, I'm not... I guess... I guess if you're five color, you still need fixing even beyond the guild gates. Especially if you're trying to fit those gates in. Ooh, no hits. I mean, I guess we actually kind of got hits as far as what we put in the graveyard, but no land. Plaza of Harmony... So they're probably a um, Maze's End deck more than any other kind of gate deck. Because that'd be a reason to play the single color gates. It'd make you want to prioritize that a little bit more. Okay, Eccentric Farmer, find us a land, please. Okay, there we go. We'll grab the forest, why not? And we'll swing in for one. One thing to be worried about here is Gates Ablaze. But our Bookworm is actually going to be big enough that Gates Ablaze doesn't matter that much. <laughs> like, yet. Right now it only deals four. 
it'll be a while before Gates of Blaze does anything. Is this a gate? Technically, no, it is not. Yeah, so Gates of Blaze is going to be a long time before it kills our bookworm. We've got Rise of the Witch King and Bone Shards for when they play their big stupid creatures like Gatebreaker Ram, just like giant creatures. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a kind of Mazes and control -y deck. We're just going to drop that into play. Put Wayfinder to hand, I think. Hopefully find our next land drops with these. Sick, there's one. So opponent can currently burn everything for 5 damage. Because this is a gate. No, it's not a gate. Wow, our opponent only has 3 gates down. Yeah, it's only a 5-5. Five, five. <laughs> oh man, alright, it's about to be a 6-6, six, six, but... So I can see if you're trying to play like a harder control game, you really want to have this life gain and the consistent mana from non-gate lands, but I would be playing a, a much more controlling deck if I were trying to do what opponent is doing, I think. But it is, it is cool. It's cool to see this this build that the opponent's doing. Um, what do we have in our graveyard that's worth reanimating? Troll? I guess we've got Troll. Not super excited to reanimate that, but might as well. What we really want... Actually, no, I'm not going to get the Troll. I want to Dusk Mangler something. Dusk Mangler is our best way of slowing the opponent, or stopping the opponent, that is. So we're going to say to Rayfinder, see what we hit. Top four, we find a Swamp and another Troll. Troll is a good clock, but it is not a removal spell like Dusk Mangler is. Eccentric Farmer comes down. Mills an Archfiend. Okay. Still nothing I'm too excited about. I think we're going to... Oh, we have Rise of the Witch King, which is a removal spell. I... Don't know why I was not thinking that. I, I, yeah, that was dumb of me. All right, opponent. Just trying to go off with Guild Summit and get to Maze's End. I mean, they're they're coming kind of close. They only need four more gates. If they play the Maze this turn, yeah. Arboreal Grazer, solid. Oh, Arboreal Grazer is actually a huge issue. Because we can now... I guess we have two removal spells. We've got Bone Shards to kill the Ram. And then we can eventually Rise of the Witch King. Yeah, that should be fine. Gatebreaker Ram is... Gatebreaker Ram is interesting in this deck. I would actually... If I were building this deck... Um... I would actually avoid the Gatebreaker Ram, except maybe in, like, the sideboard. I don't know. Because right now, my Bone Shards, if they didn't play Gatebreaker Ram, would be kind of a useless card. So them playing Gatebreaker Ram, in a weird way, helps me a little bit. Discard the Archfiend. Da -ba -dum, that creature dies. Then we will swing in. And see what our opponent does. Based on what they do, we may just like Archfiend of Sorrows and kill their Arboreal Grazer. Okay, they block it all the way. So if that's what our opponent chooses to do, then we will just Blood for Bones, Sacrificing Seder Wayfinder. We will get onto the battlefield a hard-to-block creature. Pretty much impossible to block creature. Put Stitcher Supplier into hand. We will immediately play the Supplier. Load ourselves up. So that pretty much no matter what our opponent does, we've, we've got them. Like they, If they wrath the board here, we can still start hasting in the Archfiends of Sorrows. Okay, there's Gates of Blaze. Does not kill the bookworm. They need a second one. 
they could have, I think they just didn't count. I think our opponent didn't count there. They pro because they could have used Maze's End before they did that. We'll see though. We'll see what our opponent has. There may have been a reason to not kill our Bookworm. They might need every bit of mana this turn. Although, I don't know. It seems, oh wow, they are just big Hydroid Crosses. Big Blocker Boy. Okay, I would love a creature right now to turn on our Rise of the Lich. Oh, that does it. That's the game. Dusk Mangler. And here's what I was talking about. We have so many things that, um, that find us lands that we are actually just the hard casting our creatures plan is very realistic. And we, we have a lot of burn effectively between the Dusk Manglers and the Haste from Archfiend of Sorrows. So I actually really like this deck because if, if your opponent mulligans hard to like get graveyard hate, even in best of three, you can just start casting your creatures and it's still fairly good. So there we go. That's the two, three. Let's get to the deck wrap up and talk about maybe ways to improve the deck. Okay, a 2-3 record, and I think that's what the deck deserves. As sad as I am about it, I think that's what it deserves. So one thing that I think this deck has that has surprised me is just there's a lot more space in the deck than I'm used to for Reanimator because Dusk Mangler is a rea oh, you know. Yeah, Dusk Dusk Mangler and is a reanimation target and removal kind of. Um, Archfiend of Sorrows is a payoff for milling and a reanimation target at the same time. Troll of Kaza Doom is a land drop and a reanimation target and a self-discard outlet all at once. Eccentric Farmer is a way to hit our land drops and it's something to sacrifice to Blood for Bones. Same thing with Colony Garden. It's a land drop that also gives us something to sacrifice for Blood for Bones. So, like, this whole deck feels... And it's also mill to find a reanimation targets. Like the whole deck feels very nice. I love the feel of the deck. But even with that, we are an ABC combo deck. We need a way to get, I guess, kind of ABC D if you count lands. We need to have a creature on the battlefield, of which we only do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've only got 14 creatures. I'd probably make that my first change. We've got these 14 creatures that we need on the battlefield if we want to cast these reanimation spells. We need to have a reanimation spell, and we need to have the lands to do them, and the creature in the graveyard. Like, it's just... There's too much, I feel like. So even though this potentially is faster, these reanimation spells, I don't even know what the deck needs. I feel like we need probably just more I win the game sort of reanimation targets. That's probably the big thing that this deck is missing. Because you could see, we the deck is fairly consistent at getting our creatures down, but sometimes our opponent is like playing Orcish Bowmasters, and we reanimate Dusk Mangler, and they're like, okay, I lose a 1-1, one, one, my nice little amassed army. And I'm like, oh, I guess reanimation wasn't that strong. So the issue is, I think, reanimation targets. Right now, Troll of Kaza Doom is really nice because it gives us a good clock if we're playing against slower decks, but I think we need better cards at catching us up. Maybe Bramble Worm. Maybe I should be playing Bramble Worm in this deck. And that might be something for the sideboard. If you're playing best of three, you could start playing more things geared towards certain matchups. A couple extra copies of Archfiend of Sorrows. Some Bramble Worms for like more go wide and aggro decks. Can put in some bookworms for the grindy um, control matchup. Stuff like that. I could see that being a way you take the deck. Um, but as it is, I don't think this deck is good enough in best of one. It just it's really good at doing its thing. Its thing is just not strong enough. So I don't think I'd recommend this one. But it was cool to see having Rise of the Witch King. I actually really like Rise of the Witch King. I may have to make another deck later that's using this. I just am not sure quite where that would be. 
I have a thought, but I'll save that for another time. So with that, keep enjoying Budget Magic, and until next time, bye-bye.